again, good morning everybody and welcome to the Red Trains. My name is Jerry and we're going to head on south, down to the old city of St. Augustine. I'm sure that's no surprise, I'll bet you knew that's where we were going to go. We're going to talk a little bit about the history of our town, tell a few stories, kind of integrate the two and hopefully have a good time along the way. So we're going to make a little right hand turn here on the Talamato Lane. Talamato Lane was named after the Talamato Indians. Out here to the left we see all these cars parked where these buildings are at. At one time it was the Talamato Indian Village. The Spanish came to town they got along really well with the Indians. In fact, the Spanish taught the Indians how to read, how to read, how to write about Christianity. So if you look over here to the left, you see the Talamato Cemetery. That's the Catholic Cemetery. You notice it's on the inside of the city walls as compared to the Protestant on the outside. But there ain't been anybody buried in there since the 1700s. Also in the corner of the little white fence, you see a live oak tree about 10 feet up the live palm tree growing right out of the center of the St. Augustine's most loving couple. The love tree, they say if you stand underneath that tree and kiss your sweetheart, you'll have a long, loving, lasting relationship. Just be sure it's your sweetheart. It could go on and on and on endless up ahead of us here on the left hand side it's the city gates city gates the old days had a drawbridge every bridge would go down during the day for folks to come and go back and forth as they chose but at night when it gets dark the bridge would close up if you're on the outside of this wall looking in and it got dark chances are you could be out there looking in until breakfast not a good place to be back in those days so we got the city gates up here on the left and on the right is stop number five it is the north end of st george about three doors down, excuse me, on the right hand side you see the old wooden schoolhouse was built by the Spanish in the 1700s. They built it out of cedar and handmade wooden nails. Stop number five, North St. George, City Gates, and the old wooden schoolhouse. All aboard. So we just left stop number five. Here, stop number six. How about that? Numerical order. Up here, stop number six is, is the colonial corner. We're going to pull in this little horseshoe driveway and the wood wall on the right hand side behind that wall of 300 years of living history. There's a blacksmith shop in there that's fully operational, and several other stores burned at the lifestyles over 300 years ago. There's a couple of pubs a British pub and a Spanish pub. If you're looking for something to eat or drink, you might want to keep that in mind. Stop number six, Colonial Quarter. All aboard. streets the fact is narrow and curvy it's a little on the narrow side helps us decipher cool breezes off the Atlantic Ocean down through our town there's a pretty good job always a nice little breeze going down high pollen except on Wednesdays that's a little on the curvy side because back in the old days when there were ships out there in the bay shooting cannonballs at targets in St. Augustine it was hard to hit that target it was on a curve kind of a defense mechanism having a curvy street and the beautiful building here on the left-hand corner is Spanish and Mediterranean architecture. There's a few of those buildings scattered around town. But for the most part, the buildings in St. Augustine were actually built by the Spanish during the first and second Spanish period. That was the 1600s. The Spanish built the lower level, it wasn't the British in the town, but they had it on the second floor as the balcony. Well, you thought that maybe they were building this project together. Not so. Actually, the Spanish built the bottom part of the buildings. The English, they came to town 100 years later. Stop number number seven right here. So our stop for Hypolita. We're going east and west, and St. George going north and south. All aboard. 
Town on his honeymoon in 1883 and his wife fell in love with the city from day one. They decided they wanted to build a couple of hotels here in town, a place where they could come during the winter months, January, February, and March, get away from the snow, the slush, the sleep, come up north and have a good time in the Florida sunshine. Northern the sawgrass, Palm Beach, in front of Nina Beach in Jacksonville. That's a gorgeous drive, even on a rainy day. They went in north, and they went in south. Little speed bump. Yeah. Our next stop up here is the beautiful old fort, the Castillo de San Marcos National Monument, the Castle of St. Mark, Old Fort Marion. It, was, it is the busiest like historical the location in the city by about 10 right. times its closest competition. This whole fort was built in 1672 and took 23 years to complete the project. It was finished in 1695. Built by the Spanish military, Indians, prisoners, and slaves, anybody with a strong back and a shovel was welcome to volunteer and help out. Now this fort was never captured in battle. The only time it changed hands was through the signing of a treaty, the little stroke of a pen. It's the tenth fort to be located on this piece of land. The first nine were made out of wood. Guess what? They got destroyed in battle by fire, they just deteriorated over the years with the weather and termites. This is our stop for the Castillo, Grace San Marcos National Monument. All aboard!